Hi everyone, thanks for watching our quick training video on identifying phishing threats. Additionally, we have started a video training library located on our blog at www.armonetworks.com slash blog under the category video training. We aim to keep all our videos around five minutes so you can quickly and easily learn something new. Phishing emails are one of today's fastest growing cyber threats. You can see last year's phishing emails increased by 250%. That's a huge leap. Plus, 9 out of 10 phishing emails now contain ransomware. Let me just put this into perspective for you. If a hacker sends out 20,000 generic phishing emails with a ransomware virus that demands $100 per victim and only 3% of people click the link, then the hacker just made $60,000. You can see how lucrative this is for cyber criminals, so don't expect these trends to slow down. Today we're going to cover the differences between phishing emails. Did you know there are three different types? Generic phishing? or bulk phishing, spear phishing, and the most targeted level of phishing, which is also known as whaling. All three types are designed to target people because historically it's been easier for hackers to break into computer networks through people and not security technology. First up, generic bulk phishing. Here, hackers cast a wide net and hope anyone will click. Let's cover the four basic steps of verifying an email's legitimacy. Check the sender information. Our email systems show a display name, not the exact email that is sending the message. I'll show you how to view the full contact details on the next slide. The email is generic. In this example, you can see the greeting line simply says hello. Third, check for poor English or grammar. Poor grammar is a telltale sign of a phishing email and hover over any links within the email to see where they actually are sending you to. And when in doubt, never click on an email link. Go straight to the emailer's website. Here's an email I sent to myself. You can see Outlook only shows a display name. If you hover over the name, a pop-up box comes up allowing you to see the full contact details. Here you can see who the sender is. Check the spelling closely, a cyber criminal could criminal could easily drop a letter out of a domain name like armonetworks.com to trick you. Unfortunately, scammers love taking advantage of people around the holidays and tragic events like major earthquakes or hurricanes. Watch out for copycat emails during these times of popular brands like Amazon, UPS, FedEx, Red Cross, Apple, etc. Always use best practices we just reviewed. And again, when in doubt, go directly to the emailer's website. I can't stress that enough. Spear phishing. Spear phishing attacks are more targeted and personalized. This personalization is to increase the chances of you clicking and them fooling you. Attackers will gather publicly available information on targets prior to launching spear phishing attacks and will use those personal details to impress targets' friends, to impersonate targets' friends, relatives, coworkers, and other trusted contacts. Much of the information can be gleaned from their, targeted, uh, their target's profiles and or activity on social media sites. So be careful when you're sharing on social media. In this example, it is possible the, hacker, the hackers compromised a partial list of Verizon account numbers. They're using that to make their message more believable and dramatically increasing the chances that you'll click. Whaling. This is becoming very popular. Criminals are essentially impersonating C-level employees and requesting highly sensitive information from your accounting or finance employees. These attackers thoroughly research the, targeted organiza the target organization's structure and communication patterns. This is how they achieve highly personalized emails and very high response or click-through rates. This goes back to verifying con email contact information carefully. Double-check the spelling of domains. Follow the best practices that we've already talked about in this uh, video series, and in this case, verbally verify requests for sensitive data. Massive data breaches caused by people clicking on phishing emails happen all the time, even locally. Take Concord, New Hampshire school system. A whaling email was sent posing as the superintendent of schools. Attackers acquired all W-2 info for the Concord, New Hampshire school district. The York, Maine Hospital, hackers gained access to their server through a phishing email and acquired massive amounts of personally identifiable information.
Because hackers target humans will always be the weakest link in, the, in your uh, organization's security. So always remember the best practices we went over today. There's a lot at stake for your business. The financial impact of a data breach can be really detrimental to small businesses. Financial losses include lost revenue, cost to assist victims with monitoring services, reputational damage, legal costs, and much more. Check out these Google results that came up when I searched Holiday Inn. Would you want to stay at a place where they do not protect your credit card information? The costs are adding up for Holiday Inn in more than just revenue streams. So what can you do to protect your business? Don't overshare on social media. That is how you become a whaling victim. Question everything. You can never be too sure. Follow the best practices we learned here today. And when in doubt, go directly to a trusted website instead. Always question unusual requests or requests for highly sensitive data. And lastly, create awareness. A great way to start creating awareness would be to share this video with someone else that could learn from it. Thanks for your time today. And as always, stay safe.